TV Photo X1.5 to fix it, and welcome back to another video. Well, this one is gonna be a little bit of a photo walk or an impromptu photo walk, I would say. Uh, here's a little bit of a backstory. Uh, as you know, that this room that I'm sitting and recording in has been overhauled uh, for a couple of weeks ago. And above me was uh, before a different type of ceiling light, but we changed it out to a chandelier or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but that meant that <clears throat> someone, and not me this time, <clears throat> uh, dropped that uh, lamp in on the floor. And this is actually a tiled floor I'm sitting on. So a part of that lamp broke and was made of ceramics. So. Uh, parents went to Stockholm in order to get a new piece for that lamp and they got it, but it didn't uh, fit uh, color-wise, it looked like shit, so me and my dad had to go back uh, and use the open purchase. So anyway, before we went to the lamp store, we decided to go to the Museum of Technology, the National Swedish Museum of Technology in Stockholm. And uh, I thought that, well, I remember this from the 90s when I was there last, so over 17 years ago, and I remembered it being very vividly, you know. And when we got there, we paid the entrance fee. It was about 150 Swedish kroner per person. No student discounted that place. And it was, it, they, you know, no. Would I recommend people going to that museum? Uh, in one word, no, I wouldn't. Uh, it has basically become a glorified playpen, uh, you know. I went there because they said that they were having a uh, the the uh, exhibition, the photographic the photographing human, and basically uh, it was kind of boring. It was a small room uh, filled with uh, photographic gear, but very mediocre such. I mean, uh, it was basically one one monitor was basically just you know disposable cameras. Uh, you know, Fuji uh, Fuji disposable camera that looks like a Fuji Fuji 35 millimeter film roll and all that. You know, Pringles can cameras or whatever. I just made that up uh, to, to get to, to paint your picture. There was only one piece of gear. It, I mean, in one mount mount it was even just you know like a a uh, Nikon F3. I mean, I have one of those in my bookcase I that I can use daily if I wanted to. I mean, it was nothing really exclusive or exotic, and it was very, not one single gear from Polaroid. So it was a little bit boring in that aspect. But I would probably put a picture of it here a little bit quickly. Uh, but the only thing that I thought was worth the trip and looking at was the electron microscope uh, and Hasselblad 500 and 500 cm camera used by Swedish photographer Leonard Nilsson when he did his electron microscope uh, photographs. So that gear was actually in that little exhibit, so that was uh, uh, worthwhile. But anyway, I'll talk a little bit about the gear I used when I went there. First of all, I didn't take a film camera, or rather, I didn't take a 35 film camera this time around. Uh, because I wanted something that I could film and take stills, so it was the D7200. Also inside the museum I wanted to take some bracketed photos, so I had the potential of doing some HDR about it. Because I thought it was a little bit more involving, you know, with this uh, photography exhibit, but it wasn't, basically. But anyway, the lens that I chose for this was maybe not that much of a, you know, a surprise. It is the Tokina. Uh, ATX, uh, uh, ATX uh, autofocus 28 to 70 millimeter constant f 2.8. I mean, this lens great for that purpose when you need a wide to mild zoom, and uh, also think about it that uh, you need to multiply the, the uh, focal length with a crop factor of the Nikon camera, and that's 1.5. So anyway, of course, I also took along the you know little Panasonic. Action cam, uh, what is it now? HXA1M. So those two were the mainstay, and also I actually brought the uh, Polaroid Sun 600, and I took actually two images. That was all I did because I realized that inside the museum it was basically boring. But I managed to take two Polaroids of the 
Bell 206 Jet Ranger helicopter that is on the stand outside and I did two bracketed shots on it. Uh, this one was the first I did and uh, the sun was going up actually and behind it so it became a little bit too dark and uh, then this one became a lot better actually but still a little bit too dark in my opinion but that's a little bit of the charm with Polaroids. Uh, you get basically a representation. This is before digital photography, this is the JPEG of uh, film photography, in my opinion. Polaroids, the JPEG of film photography. But anyway, yeah, basically, I also did take some pictures of the same subject with the D7200, and I even convinced my dad to film me while I took one of these Polaroid images. So, uh, yeah, I'll put, probably put that some B-roll here, or we're gonna just jump over. But anyway... When we were done at that museum, I'll show you a little bit about what happened, what was what in that museum. Uh, we basically went out to, to Skeppsholmen, which is just by the Grand Hotel and uh, the National Museum in Stockholm. It's a little island that is connected with a bridge, and that's where we parked the car. And we went up to Södermalm, which is kind of this avant-garde type uh, deal uh, when. Uh, you know where the lamp store was so i took the time and took some photos and a little bit of video uh, as we walked uh, from uh, Skeppsholmen to uh, Södermalm or Slussen and uh, you know the gondola so a little bit like uh, when i went to Stockholm myself and i took the the Nikon F5 this summer so basically this is the same town and a little bit of the same places but at a different time of year Keep in mind, it's early December now, so yeah, that's about it. But anyway, I think I'll just uh, cut over to the filmed material and I'll put on some of the images, you know, like I used to. And also you might get some audio commentary from me when I... Yeah, you know, you know the deal by now, basically. But anyway, as always, this is Tobias Bergstrom from TB Photo X 1.5 to FX, and I'd like to see you guys in the next video. And as always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. So take care from now on. Bye. Okay, so now we're actually heading out in the car out here to the place called Järdet. The thing you see at the left in the image is uh, Korkness Tornet, which is a television broadcast tower. And soon on the right side, I think it comes here shortly, excuse the shaky camera work, but anyway. Oh yes, yeah, so that, that white building is the Nautic Museum, or Nautic Museum. Might be something for a future video, but anyway. Then we have this uh, orange building uh, right here that we are passing by in a little bit of an excess speed. It's the police museum. And uh, there you go, there the grey building is the National Museum of Technology. And there's the Jet Ranger that is actually part of the police museum exhibition. So the, yeah, there's me with the Polaroid camera, my dad filming. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'll just uh, let you enjoy the show and I'll be back shortly. Bye. Okay, so now we're inside the museum, and this is a little bit of the technology section for the computer and how the computer has evolved. Yeah, and a little bit of the soft drinks, and here you can, might see some yeah, video game paraphernalia. And okay, here is an interesting thing. This is Sweden's only Euronaut, Christer Fugelsang, who is a, yeah, a mannequin in this museum. So a couple of images of him, one of the few things that was interesting in this museum. Uh, yeah, but... Uh, I think it's just this part, and then we'll go over to the camera exhibition. So, yeah. Okay, look at that. Uh, some uh, cameras in a display mounted there, and an Icon F3. Well, I have one of those in my bookcase at home. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, a dental x-ray, some other stuff, I don't know what 
was, uh, but this is probably the most noteworthy piece in the entire exhibition in my opinion. The electron microscope and the Hasselblad 500cm camera used by Swedish photographer Lennart Nilsson, or Lennart Nilsson when he took some of the most important uh, medical and biomedical uh, images of the 20th century. So basically that's why I think this piece is quite important. And then we have this little display of some plastic point-and-shoot cameras, so a little bit of contrast there, but I think people might enjoy this as well. So, you know, different strokes for different folks. So, yes, but uh, in all essence, this part of the exhibition, in my opinion, was the most important part, you know, this electron microscope and Hasselblad camera, because of the photographer who used it. But anyway, I think this is the end from this little part, and now, actually, we are at Schweppesbrug. And uh, this little permanent exhibition here is uh, by the uh, Modern Museum, or Museum of Modern Art. So, yeah, I thought I'd do some HDR about these, uh, you know, of these, uh, yeah, you know, it's just a Lightroom's uh, version of HDR, which is kind of uh, simple or basic, I should say, uh, but I still think it's quite effective for what it is. But anyway, I'll see you, in the, see you later, so take it from now on. Okay, so now Royal Castle and so on, and now we're gonna leave uh, Schweppesholmen and going up towards uh, Södermalm, a grand hotel and so on. Uh, and you know, I, there was a lot of construction being done in the city, or rather these parts of the city, uh, at the time as we were there. So you can see here this panorama here, they were rebuilding Slussen, which is a landmark in Stockholm, but it was supposed to be uh, condemned to being too old, so now they're actually rebuilding it. So you can see the construction plank here with a lot of windows so you can view the construction and how it's ongoing. But anyway, this is a little bit me retracing in a way the steps I took when I was here in the summer with the Nikon F4. So it's a little bit interesting to just, you know, revisit the same places uh, with a different camera at a different time of year. But anyway, classic belisening, now we're at that store. And yeah, take a look at this. I did some B-roll in the store and I'm just gonna use this as the backdrop to to superimpose some of the other images, uh, yeah, you know, like this. So I'll just let you enjoy the show for now, and so you'll hear from me soon. Take care. Okay, so all you musically inclined, Hellstone music. I mean, this place is one of hidden treasure. Unfortunately, I had my arm a little bit over the field of view of the Panasonic Action Cam, unfortunately. But have a look at this store. I mean, it is phenomenal. I'll just uh, shut up and let you enjoy. So, peace out.
Yes, and now we're actually coming up towards the end of this little impromptu photo walk at Digital Day in Stockholm. So yes, I just want to say thank you to everybody who has watched this, and uh, yeah, you know, I'll see you in the next video and all of that malarkey. But uh, anyway, I think that the last place we went to was that uh, in order to get back to Skeppsholmen, we took a detour uh, around Gamla Stan, and I actually took an image. Uh, I reproduced an image. Uh, that I had taken with an icon F4 uh, three months uh, prior to this uh, instant, and I thought I'll just do it with the uh, digital technology, and we'll see the difference between them. And uh, yeah, as always, I uh, hope you enjoyed this little impromptu photo walk. Maybe you want to visit this uh, city in the future, preferably when there is not so much construction going on. Uh, but anyway, as always, this is Tobias Bergstrom of TB Photo X 1.5 to FX, and I'd like to see you guys in the next video. So, as always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and so on and so forth. But anyway, I don't think this is the exact end of the episode, but in all essence, uh, I don't really think I have that much more to come with, and I'll just let you enjoy the final moments of this uh, uh, this little episode. So, see you in the next one. Bye.